It's Friday. Do you know your weekend plans? This guy here with me, Ryan Snyder, he knows a bunch of people's weekend plans. And sh- shocker, they're all coming to Penn State to see Penn State football this weekend. So Ryan Snyder with us, as always, on the Friday edition of the BWI Daily, talking about the visitors coming to Happy Valley, the recruits that might be f- future Penn State Nittany Lions. Ryan, welcome to the show. Good to be back, man. It's Friday. This is one of the best... Uh... Fridays of the year for me, man. Masters and uh, big Phillies fan. Yep. Phillies are back. I know you don't you don't care about baseball that much, but I don't uh, care about any I sport. Love- so like I I'm a huge <laughs> bummer. I don't care about any sport. I care about football. Like when people we had the conversation about college basketball. Eh, yeah. Eh, eh. Like I'm a, I I don't relate. Unfortunately, I love them all. <laughs> I love them all, man. Masters, baseball. Uh, all types of good stuff this week. Excited. Explain golf to me, because golfing itself, like I can imagine if you're not terrible at it, is fun. Watching somebody else golf is strange to me, because it's not like, I don't know. I don't know. I've never yeah. been able to like get into watching somebody else golf. I just wager on it. Like, let's just be honest. Like, <laughs> that's how it is. Like, that's I don't really answer. watch the whole thing, you know, but, you know, if my guy's in the mix at the end, I'm going to watch it then, but... I should have and realized. I'm a terrible golfer. I'm a terrible golfer, so I can't really speak for that. Get in the have this debate with Nate one day, but you guys will never get into the podcast because it'll go forever. We so. here's what we need to do is you and I need to go golfing with Nate just to infuriate him, just so that it takes six that. hours. I've done that. Yeah, we did that in <laughs> Scottsdale for the Fiesta Bowl. It went uh, it went about as expected there. Yeah, we, maybe you and I day, we just quit. You, you and I can play, can shotgun and play the same ball, and he can do whatever he wants. That way it'll take half the amount of time it would. Uh, so, anyway, <laughs> so let's talk let's about talk Penn State football. Uh, you, you've had a lot of stories up at BlueWhiteIllustrated.com this week about players that are visiting, not just uh, on the weekend, but during the week, not just recruits for 23, but 24, 25, and I think very importantly, the transfer portal. So let's mm-hmm. start there uh, with a former Penn State recruit, somebody they were interested in, leaving a program that immediately sets off alarm bells for head coach James Franklin to go investigate who's the player that was on campus this week. Well, who's coming to campus today? Oh, excuse me. Say, is Thank Damian you. Robinson. Um Former Maryland Terrapin. I think anyone who follows recruiting remembers the name. He was a... Uh, at the time, at least a top 100 prospect, depending on where you look at uh, coming out of Quincy Orchard. He was a 2021 prospect. So we weren't talking about him too long ago. Uh, he played, uh, what was it 13 games for Maryland this past year? T. Frank, you've seen his yep. film. Um, played 19, I think he had 19 tackles, two and a half tackles for loss. Look, uh, I'd be lying if I said I have a good feel for any of these transfers. We've talked about that so many times. But uh, Damien is, is very quiet. I mean, we don't really even know who exactly is offered. There's been talks about Auburn, Tennessee. Uh, I believe Oregon was one. I think Texas A&M, USC, a couple others who are interested. Uh, but but where exactly he's gone so far, or will he go, or where will he go uh, in the weeks ahead? I'm I'm not sure. But uh, Penn State is expecting him. I believe to be on campus this afternoon, so Friday, April eighth, and I think he'll be here into tomorrow as well. But I need to double check on that. T. Frank, I mean, I, I'll throw this back to you. You've you've kind of watched him a little bit more, at least as Maryland film. Um, than I have is this is this the answer that Penn State's looking for at defensive end uh I mean just here from his highlights what we're showing from his I, I this it says his, his junior season I think it's his senior mm-hmm. season but it said it was a junior season on his huddle I mean just look at the length and the explosiveness this is the answer to Penn State's pass rushing problems um and I don't know that the I don't know that the film at Maryland really is all that helpful because it looks like they watched this video that you're seeing here on the YouTube channel of him catching an errant pass for a touchdown and went, oh, well, he can play linebacker. So they run a they run a, a five down front and they've got true hybrid linebackers that drop into coverage, play kind of a pseudo Sam role. So when I talk about the 11th defender, here's another great example of an edge rusher that sometimes plays Sam linebacker, sometimes covers. They used him in a two to one ratio of pass rush and coverage. So I don't think you got to see what he can do as a pass rusher. Cause he got very limited snaps, only 82 pass rushing attempts. Now on that, he still had a very good win rate, uh, physical through contact. The, the burst is the same. He needs to get a little bit bigger. I think he was 240 pounds. If he was just commit to play defensive end, he's got a huge frame. 
I, you know, I, I think he could be that. Maybe, and he's super talented, maybe he could also be a Micah Parsons type for Penn State, but I don't see that in this new Manny Diaz defense. What I see is a dude that's going to put his hand in the dirt and is going to get after the quarterback at his next stop because that is his best skill set. So if Penn State could land him, a little bit of work to do, I think, getting him up to size, getting him up to where you want him, but the talent is un unholy. I mean, just watching it there from high school, it's only gotten better since then. So yes, Penn State missed out on Gabriel and Grayson Murphy, but this would be a really big land for them. Maybe not the same production on the college level, which would be ideal, but the talent, 62nd overall player in the nation, according to the on three consensus in his class. Yeah, it would be a slam dunk. How much will NIL impact it too? That's kind of one thing we'll have to figure out. Like I said, man, I'm, I'm yeah. going to keep hitting on this. This is going to, this is going to shake things up. And uh, Penn state has their, their collectives going and all that now, but they're, they're still playing from behind. Now with that said, I mean, I don't know anything about what what Maryland's you know situation was, but I mean some of those schools I mentioned, if those are legit, which some of my my colleagues have kind of shared more than uh, you know Damian sharing that, uh, those are some heavy hitters as far as yep. collectives go. Uh, yep. You know a lot of SEC schools, Texas A and M, Tennessee. I mean some of those guys are they've got it. Uh, they've got the system down pat where Penn State's kind of just getting rolling. So just be curious to see yeah. how it shakes out. But again. Uh, we, we don't really know specifics with him, uh, but what we do know is he's going to be here this weekend. Yeah. Um, another thing I was I was trying to go through and see where Penn State was in his original recruitment, because obviously they got to know him. He's coming on campus. He was uh, a part of Penn State's plan at one point in the class. They tried to get him on campus. But when I was go the point is when I was going through his Twitter to go and see if what his top five was, all those things, v as you mentioned, very quiet guy in social media. But he did in August of 2021 sign with an NIL company. So he's already got representation, I think, from some sort of agency for NIL. I think that's a pretty, whether or not he's still with that company, you know, that's that's kind of one of the things of what what's happened in the year since then. But yeah, I, I think NIL is going to be a huge thing. And as we talked about, again, with a premium position like Pass Rush, I think, and I said this yesterday, I say it again, if you're watching the show and you heard this stump speech before, sorry, but like it is true if Penn State can't get a pass rusher this cycle because everyone else was going where there was an NIL deal, that's a direct impact on mm -hmm. on a team and on a, on a place that Penn State's known for putting pass rushers in the NFL. So if guys want to go in one or two years and get to the league, there's a lot of evidence you can do it at Penn State. Something else is going to be factored in there. And if it's NIL, I think you can draw a clear line between the two. Yep. I That's... Pretty much everything, man. I don't have a yeah. whole lot to add to it. I mean, this is a program that's coming off, uh, you know, sub 500 uh, Big Ten season. So they, they need to get everybody in here and and in any means possible uh, to, to write the ship because the pressure's on. So we'll see how that goes. And of course, we'll uh, be following along and Ryan's got his sources. The to best we things... can. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> the best we can. I just I try not to, you know, I, I feel confident with 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 uh, high school kids. I have that one down pat, man. But it is so hard to track transfers. And like even like yeah. with source related wise, it's like like these these recruitments move so fast. So like sources don't want to talk about it because they don't want Auburn or Tennessee or whomever to know any details about these visits. Right. Uh, and that's. And I understand that, you know, I mean, when I talk to people about it directly, they're like, hey, look, I can share you this, but don't share it publicly. And, and that's why. So it's just it's just hard to to really open up and, and to get the full details for for transfers. But we will see what happens. Of course, Aki Mesidor is, is still in the mix, too. He's supposed to be yep. taking an official visit to Miami this weekend. I did learn that 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 was reported uh, a couple of days ago. You know, we talked about how Miami supposedly NIL yep. uh, has has a big hand in, in, in that recruitment. So. We'll see. LSU, USC, uh, Auburn are also in the mix with Mesidor. Um, we'll find out, man. But Penn State, Penn State needs to land one of these guys. Uh, and I think, yeah, I think you would agree. Robinson probably makes more sense for what Penn State wants. Yeah. So when I was watching what Mesidor does, he's exactly what they already have. He's a he's a good run mm -hmm. stuffer. And I, 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 whenever you do this, it sounds like you're you're talking down on a player. He's a good pass rusher. But Penn State is not looking for an all-around player, I don't think. I think they're looking for, again, they're looking for a fastball. Somebody can get to the quarterback because you got a lot of guys that can stop the run. Fisher and Tarburton are good run stuffers. Amin Vanover's a big body with long arms. They need speed. Penn State, especially in Manny Diaz's defense, they need speed to get after the quarterback. So I, I think, Mesidor, there's maybe some sort of um, hidden 
production there because he was used as a nose tackle for West Virginia, by the way, Mm -hmm. and a defensive tackle. He spent most of his time on the interior. If you're asking him to drop weight and play on the edge, again, even with that profile, you have evidence he can get after the quarterback from inside the tackle. There's there's less evidence from outside. So if if they're the same... I'm going to go with a guy that's bigger and quicker and longer and more explosive. And that, I mean, that's how I would view it. We'll see if either of them land up as a Nittany Lion. But, you know, they do need professional pass rushers, guys that have the ability to get there. And both those guys can fit in one way or another. Uh, but Robinson is not the only guy visiting this weekend, 2023 and beyond. There is a, a good list, which you can see if you're mm-hmm. a member at bluewhiteillustrated.com. Sign up for just a dollar. Get 12 months of access. We'll give you a couple of the names here, and it's a long list. We can't give you all the names, but Ryan, who are the ones that stand out to you as far as prospects that are visiting this weekend? Mm-hmm. Uh, well, the, a good group of these guys have already kind of put it out there on Twitter. Uh, the the majority of these guys have kind of, uh, like I said, just, just tweeted out that they're visiting this weekend. A few of them that kind of grabbed my attention. I've talked about Mason Robinson a ton. You know, the, the McDonough defensive end, he he will be back just for Saturday. Now, Penn State is actually practicing in Beaver Stadium Friday night, uh, so Robinson won't be in attendance for for practice. Uh, but a lot of these other guys will. Uh, Marcus Stokes, quarterback uh, out of uh, Nice High School in Point of Vedra Beach, he's returning for his second visit. Now, Stokes just saw, I believe it was Old Miss, Indiana, Cincinnati. Now he's coming over to Penn State, and then he's going to hit up Virginia Tech before flying back home. So he's kind of doing a – you know, a little uh, little circle there of uh, of, of different schools. Uh, look, I, I mean, I, I feel like this is a uh, this is Marcus is quickly becoming Penn State's most important quarterback, and he, and he's been that way for a little while. But now, if, if you know, JJ Cole hasn't visited Penn State yet, and and I thought that there was a chance that would happen. I mean, we I, we always thought JJ was leaning towards Iowa State, but the fact that he hasn't gotten here yet certainly grabs my attention. Uh, so so Stokes feels like somebody that Penn State really has to land. Or they might have to go down another tier uh, for quarterback, and they and they don't they don't want to do that after missing out on Dante Moore, of course, who you know was their top guy. Uh, a few other guys, I mean, Emilio Agard's a top twenty twenty four prospect. He tweeted out that he will be here this weekend. I, I wrote a story on Agard last week. SEC schools are going to be a serious player with the St. Joseph's Prep uh, player. You know, good to Penn State's getting him here. They have to stay yeah. on him, but he's not one of those guys where it's like you know the 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 multiple conversations I've had. I, I don't see. I don't see him being like a Penn State top three lock. You know what I mean? Like right. I, I could see Penn State being top 10. And then once he gets around top five, man, I, I feel like quite a few SEC schools are going to be in it, the mix. There's there. not the in-state advantage for Penn State Correct. at yeah. that particular program well, he's actually, as much as. Yeah, he's originally from Maryland, just to clarify that. Okay. So, so many, you know, St. Joseph's Prep, man, they just pulled yeah. a bunch of Delaware guys, Maryland, uh, New Jersey. But I mean, still, he's still a local guy, right? I mean, right. just because you're across the board doesn't mean that doesn't matter. But uh, yeah, I just when I talk to him, I just don't get that vibe. You know, so there's some guys I talk to, and right off the bat, you're like, okay, Penn State's going to be a player here. Uh, I think Penn State's going to be a player with Agard, but I don't, I don't. Uh, he doesn't, you know, sound like some of these other guys who, you know, right off the bat, they they were clearly going to be Penn State uh, commits really eventually down the road. Uh, Rico Scott. Now, Rico Scott's a guy that I do I do feel pretty good about. He's a 2024 uh, wide receiver from Bishop McDevitt. He's coming back for his second visit. Uh, Ryan Montgomery as well is a 2025 prospect coming back for another visit this weekend. Yep. Uh, of course, his brother Luke is committed to Ohio State. So, yeah. you know, I think everybody already has some penciled in for the Buckeyes. But we'll I, 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 that's a great that's a great point, though, about Ryan Montgomery 2025 uh, just as a quarterback and being that I wouldn't even call it early at this point, but just what is uh, your feeling of Montgomery and and his potential and what pe- people in Lash think about him at this point? Because quarterback is always going to draw interest, especially if you've already got a brother who is a top prospect in football, even if it is at a very different position. Yeah, I mean, right now I think top 150 kind of recruit is, mm-hmm. I think, what we're looking at there. I don't know if he'll be like the number one quarterback in the nation or anything like that, but I, I could see a top uh, – Maybe top five, probably like top seven or so kind of quarterback is I think what we're what we're what we're seeing there. I mean, Brad Mandler's his trainer, of course. Yep. Brad trained uh, Drew Aller as well, so uh, I'll you know, Brad speaks very highly of him. I kind of obviously I haven't watched Ryan too much myself with him just being a freshman. Um, whenever I did watch Finley, I watched a little bit because I was watching Luke at the time, but uh, you know, mainly we were focusing on Luke. So, uh, but but uh, you know, Brad thinks he's going to be a uh, the real deal, and and you know. 
who am I to who am I to pretend that's not uh, going to be the case? So just yeah. from talking to like Charles Power and some of our other guys too, uh, they see a you know a future four star kind of player. So we will see how he develops. But man, he's all over the place. You know, Michigan, Notre Dame, uh, Ohio State, of course, Penn yeah. State. He's got some other ones. I think he's going to go to a few schools down south. So like you know, there's going to be plenty of competition there as well. Uh, but it's a, it's a I would say it's a pretty good group. I mean, there, there's there's some other 2023 guys coming up here uh, who I'll keep behind the paywall. I will actually have one other guy I will mention, though, is J. Bron Harvey. He's a four star defensive end out of North Carolina. His dad is actually from Harrisburg. So there oh. are some ties from that perspective. And Rico Scott, the Bishop McDevitt uh, 2024 wide receiver I just talked about, is his cousin. So both of them will be on campus together this weekend. That'll be good. Uh, player to watch, but again, you know, he's another guy that you know when I, when I read the tea leaves and I haven't. J. Brown doesn't talk a whole lot, so he's a, he's a little one harder to read. But uh, North Carolina seems like they will they will be the favorite there. But uh, this is his first time coming to Penn State, right? So uh, make that make that first impression and uh, see how it see how it goes. I'm always amazed, and again, if you're listening to the podcast, I always encourage you to check out YouTube so you can see some of the the players and some of the highlights. Just like you didn't think to block that guy, some of these plays, it's just like, why is the why is the most dangerous pass rusher running free, or why did you try to block mm-hmm. him with a running back? Uh, you know, yeah, just some things you notice. But anyway, still a high great school prospect. Man. You should be a high school coach, T. Frank. I would love to. <laughs> I would love to see the fight in T. Franks out there. You'd be getting all pissed, I'm sure. But oh uh, yeah, I, well, not I easy to, in high school. The problem is, Ryan. I have to protect my vocal cords. I, mm, I can only okay. make it through Bills playoff games once a year. I can't imagine having to do it the entire fall. I would not be able to do this job. So they finally will... changed the uh, overtime rules for you. There, I saw. A little yeah. late on that one. A little late. A little late. I don't know that it matters. I just, yeah. I don't know that it matters. I, I, I tend to chalk all of those things up so that I can sleep at night. I, ch- I chalk those all up to like cosmic sequencing. Like it, it, not that it's in the stars, but it's in the stars. If it was meant to happen, Last it would have. Okay, let, let's go back to recruiting. But one thing I want to say is I think they should just play eight minute overtimes in the NFL playoffs just for the playoffs. Yeah. Play half a quarter. See how it shapes up. I know, yeah. I know, player safety and all that, and that's why it'll never happen. But if you want to keep it to what football is, and you know, no gimmicks or anything, just play eight minutes. See what happens. Yeah, that My was thought. that was actually what the Bills proposed, and nobody was interested. Oh, really? In that. Yeah. So the Bills, they said whatever the time limit was, eight, ten, full quarter, whatever you want to do, just play another quarter, and then let the chips fall there where they may. Because as you just said. It's more football than it is gimmick, but that's why yeah. no one was interested in doing that. So that, that we died. Saw gimmick, uh, we saw gimmick up close this year with uh, Penn State, Illinois. I'll tell you that. That rule better change. Be but careful because we'll if you say Penn State, Illinois too many times, then the comments will explode. There will oh, be an all out okay. war in the comments. <laughs> so we got one more. We can't we can't waste it for this video we'll give them we'll give them free uh recruiting info to keep them keep everybody happy from yeah. blowing up on us so so who's next what's the next uh name you want to highlight for the either the next class um, or for 23 uh i mean that's pretty that's that's the majority of the guys i mean we we will see um actually one other guy we'll, we'll talk about is paul mubenga i believe paul if i'm screwing up your name i apologize from buford georgia uh, Paul's blowing up right now. Yeah, uh, he, left, he, let me left tackle on these. Uh, just because uh, some of these aren't uh, highlighted, he's the left tackle. Okay, here. sorry. Continue. Gotcha. Uh, man, he's been all over the place lately. Alabama, he saw in March. I believe uh, Tennessee was another school we saw in March. Uh, just in April alone, he's been to Auburn and Michigan, and now he's coming over to Penn State. I mean, his his offer sheet is now up over two dozen schools. And uh, this was a player Phil Trowine went to go see. Uh, but was it back in January, I believe, down to down to Buford, which Buford in Georgia is just an absolute powerhouse. Anybody who lives down there could tell you that. So uh, but Paul's really seems pretty wide open still. Of course, he's an offensive lineman. Likely I, I, T. Frank, do you see a tackle here? I mean, we have him at six four two eighty. Do you think he's a tackle? So I was just I was watching his film and I was debating in my head. He looks like a guard, but he's very quick. I could see him being a little bit smaller, undersized but a tackle. Yeah. So I could see okay. it going either way. And with Penn state, they need another tackle. So if they're opening up their board and looking at some other options, he would be a great option at tackle. I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, they're just, you know, they just, you know, they hosted Nathan, the another Georgia yep. prospect. And then of course, Amir Herring, who both seem like more, more so cards to me. 
Uh, so I'm just curious to get your opinion on 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 Paul here. Um, well, I'll get a better feel for the situation, obviously, once, yeah. once he wraps up his visit. But uh, they're they're not holding back on hosting O-Lyman, man. They just keep them rolling through. I mean, at this yeah. rate, I mean, they're, I feel like they're definitely going to sign six. For sure. Yeah, and it makes sense considering what they need. And, and I think the depth uh, along the offensive line, if you think about it this way, too, of if you bring in three guys at receiver – and one of them turns into a great player, and two of them help you out, that number works out. If you bring yeah. in five offensive linemen and one of them hits, you have four other holes that you need to fill. So if you go, yeah. you, you should really go high volume, especially if you don't have uh, a lot of guys you feel super confident in your depth currently on the roster. And is this also a part of the transfer portal, knowing, you know, not to be not to be uh, negative here, but like you can't you can't assume that 25 yeah. players are reaching their third year at your school anymore no no for sure uh only time will really tell on on who transfers out but i mean i'd be shocked if penn state doesn't have probably one or two offensive linemen go in the portal not maybe not after spring but uh next season you know especially like the one thing we'll be able to learn the one thing i always follow closely is who travels with the team for away games and mm -hmm. you know with with purdue being the first away game this year You'll get a very good like that. Not every scholarship player comes, so keep an eye on that. You know, I think that'll give you a, a good feel for if they're not on that that travel roster for Purdue. They, you know, keep that guy circled for a potential transfer. Put it that way. Uh, so that wraps up. I think the visitors, right? So there's a couple for the of most part, yeah, a couple others. Let's leave them behind a paywall. Yeah. I mean, we gotta <laughs> people pay for this for a reason, right? I don't want to. I'm sorry, YouTube and podcast listeners, we love you, but uh, you know, people, those people kind of pay for my uh, children a little more than you guys do no offense and, and here's here's the deal you know we're right now and this deal i think we've talked about before is ending it's a dollar to get the rest of the information um and and it's even if you even when with the dollar deal ends it is a full-on deal for the full price yeah. to get all the information you get because ryan's got you locked in on all kinds of stuff before anybody else you get the information bluewhiteillustrated.com sign up now save yourself a bunch of money sign up for a dollar and get 12 months of access to premium content uh some of the other two, stuff hold on two things i'll add to that real quick sure is one we're not done growing here like this yep. we're 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 gonna be growing here at bwi i'll leave it at that and two the dollar is supposed to end at the end of april from what i understand now that was negotiated or discussed excuse me uh, a couple months ago so i still got i gotta double check on that but if you are going to seriously consider because you know we've been pumping this promotion for like six months now right it never yeah. feels like it never ends but it is gonna i believe end at the end of this month so if you are interested uh now be the good time to do it or of course just you know before april 30th because i would hate for uh somebody to end up wanting to sign up in the beginning of may and then uh not miss out on that deal yeah um and by the way while you're at it if you're subscribing just subscribe to the blue white illustrated daily edition to bwi daily you get you get content every single day for free and if you subscribe it helps us out it makes me look like i'm doing a great job and by the way um this show currently is a huge hit with defensive <laughs> players like so yesterday uh what happened this week is I mean, we didn't talk about it on the show because i think nate was a little bit embarrassed and nate tends to be very aw shuck shy but like you know i'm gonna promote the hell out of this show Starting linebacker Curtis Jacobs for Penn State football. He loves the show. He watches the show. So, Curtis, thanks for watching. Super appreciate that. But he's not the only one. Uh, Derek Tangelo's mom came up to us after Pro Day and was like, I love your show. Oh, yeah? We watch the show after the game. We watch the show. We think you guys do a great job. Um, you know, some of the guys, some of the prospects in the class of 2022 and 2023 uh, watch the show. They watch T. Frank's film room, which made me... Hope I didn't Lush. say anything too mean. Uh, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so like if you want to show that football players think is good, who know some, a thing or two about football, subscribe to the BWI Daily Edition. Okay, some speeches that's are over. <laughs> I, I was going to say, the one that's one of the things I always run into is, man, I, I get so close with these families throughout the recruiting process and then you know, let the cards fall where they fall when they get here. And, you know, sometimes you got to critique. And that's just one thing I've always struggled with, though, is it, there's so many families up here that, uh, you know, I really appreciate. And obviously the players themselves, they give up more time than anybody. So, yeah, I always I'm always going to struggle with that. I don't know if I uh, I don't know if I'll ever be able to fully critique some of these guys the way I'm supposed to, which is why I normally just stick to recruiting. Right. That's why <laughs> I try not to yeah. dive too much into the let you guys do the uh, critiquing of the team. Well, hopefully, I've always said this, hopefully it's just fair. 
That's always what I want it mm-hmm. to be. I want to make sure that, and I think that's why it's been received well is like, it's not like these guys aren't coached. It's not like they're going to be yeah. perfect on the field. As long as you're fair and you're not overly critical one way or the other, I think it, it lands okay. Um, so yeah. other players we might be talking to in the future that you've already oh, talked talking to. recruiting still. Yes. Oh, I forgot we're talking <laughs> recruiting. It's all right. It's been like five minutes. <laughs> um, it's a Friday. Yeah. I might as well have like a, a mojito or something in my hand. It's like, eh, let's have some fun today. Kyle Altooner, what mm-hmm. uh, what did he talk about with you? And what was your impression of his uh, visit? He visited last weekend, correct? Yeah, yeah. Spoke highly of Coach Trout Wine. I mean, which is what you expect from a 2024 guy who uh, just kind of getting to know the coaches. Of course, he has to reach out to Penn State and all the coaches on his own. So, uh, you know, that that process is really kind of still getting started. But uh, spoke highly of practice, spoke highly of James Franklin, his energy, right? Like, I feel like everybody says, you know, what, what stands out about James Franklin? His energy. Well, yeah, I, I agree with that one. But <laughs> I feel like that's just like the generic go-to answer for Franklin, uh, which, you know, I get it. But uh, it's just funny how many guys say that. So, uh, but, it's, you know, I look at Altooner is probably going to be the next big time good counsel offensive lineman. Of course, they landed Landon land Tangwall previously. Uh, Michigan State, Notre Dame, those are two other schools that uh, have recently offered and seem to be pushing him pretty hard. But uh, great kid. I mean, we got to see him at the uh, Under Armour camp, T Frank. I know yeah. I mean, you you focused on the O line a little bit more than I did. Uh, I, I know you said you, you liked what you saw there. Yeah. I, unfortunately, I didn't get to see all of his reps because I had to go set things up to talk to the guys afterwards. But uh, yeah. he played, he was at center, right? So he was, he yes. was taking snaps and, and he was blocking nose tackles. He was, he was a wall on the ones I watched where he was just. He did not give up an inch, and I didn't realize he was a 2024 guy. Um, so that leads me to my next question of, I know 2024, but is he he's going to be an interior player, I would assume, and then is yeah. this a center for Penn State because they have not recruited a lot of those uh, over the last couple of years of guy that's a center only or specifically that? Yeah, it's a good question and one I need to ask about. You know, he was lining up the center there, but of course when you're in those camps, like, it's not like he's actually snapping. You know what I mean? Like it's, yeah. it's he, he might as well just be a guard the way the, you know, O line D line works. So yeah. uh, I'd have to ask Kyle, I don't believe he snapped too much, but uh, you know, it was one of those things where I got off of him and I was, you know, looking back on Under Armour stuff. And one of those questions that I kind of just forgot to ask, but it will be something to keep an eye on for sure. Um, you know, we'll, we'll see how it uh, shakes out down the road. Of course they did just host a potential center uh, this past weekend I'm, I'm, or this past week. I'm drawing a blank on the name. It's a 2023 player. Uh, and of course, my visit list is not loading at the time, but uh, they did they did just host a, a center this past weekend. So I do think that's uh, something they're looking for. But okay. again, man, with so many interior guys committed, I mean, it, it tackle has to be for 2023. Excuse me. Yeah. Uh, tackle has to has to be the priority right now. But uh, for 2024, uh, you know, it's obviously wide open. I would expect uh, I would expect him to be probably one of their top 10 or so targets i I definitely think they want to see how kyle continues to grow because right now we have him like right at six three so um you know if he can get up another inch or two i think it would help him who by the way that center for 2023 was connor lou another georgia guy who (laughs) my list finally just loaded there sorry about that but he is a true center for 2023 uh was just up this past week and i didn't get to catch up with connor yet so that's why i haven't discussed him too much but Man, they keep hosting uh, O-linemen, like I said earlier, man, just just from all over. Um, now this is their, what, third Georgia offensive lineman to come up here in the last couple of weeks. So we'll see if anything moves there, if uh, Phil Trotwine can continue to stock the cupboard for the Penn State offensive line. But always, we talked about uh, Marcus Stokes, we talked about Ryan Montgomery, but there are more quarterbacks that we have to discuss. So tell us about Davey Belfort and uh, his visit to yeah. Penn State. Yeah, son of uh, Vitor Belfort. All my UFC fans out there, you, you guys should remember the name. I think he was a light heavyweight, middleweight. Uh, I know he was the real deal. I remember watching him back in the day. Uh, of course, he's retired now. But uh, Davey was up here this past weekend, 5'11", 165. Of course, he's a freshman um, from Dillard uh, High School. I believe he was at uh, he was at another school, and he just now transferred to Dillard. He didn't play there this past weekend but or this past season. Uh, Texas A&M, Georgia, Arkansas, UCF, Alabama, Miami, Oregon, Tennessee, you Old Miss, they've all offered him. And now Penn State has kind of joined that group uh, following his visit this past weekend. You know, he made it clear that he's been staying in touch with Jurchic for a little while now, uh, which is interesting considering he has to initiate all of those conversations. So I think he said, I think he said it goes back to eighth grade and Jurchic wanted him to throw at Penn State last year, uh, but he was actually unable to make it. So, 
Uh, with, with Davey, though, I mean, just watching him, I mean, he's a hell of a player. That's clear. Just look at his scholarship list. I mean, it's yeah. he's going to clearly be, a, you know, I would think kind of like a Ryan Montgomery, like maybe fringe top five, probably. Uh, I would say definitely a, a top 10 player uh, or top 10 quarterback, excuse me, for his class. The, the whole question with Davey is just size. You know, yep. we have at 5'11 right now. You know, obviously schools are going to want to see 6'2", I would think. Uh, that, that's So that's going to be the big question. But everything else lines up really well. He's a heck of a player, comes from great bloodlines. And, uh, man, he had a really good season this past year. I believe it was like 22 touchdowns, only seven interceptions, a little over 2,000 yards passing, which for a freshman is pretty good. Mm-hmm. So um, but 5'11", uh, that, that he's just got to grow. And if, yeah. and if he can grow on those inches, he's going to be the real deal. So that's an interesting thing to bring up when it comes to quarterback size because I agree and and I don't think you're going to find anyone who wants a quarterback that's short but is that still a barrier for players knowing that guys like Kyler Murray exist and and I know that we're pointing to guys that are outliers but there is an evidence of Russell Wilson and even go back to Doug Flutie of shorter quarterbacks being successful in uh, college and in the NFL. So is it a, an absolute deal breaker, do you think? Or is no. it more of a preference? Like, we'll take no. a guy, but, it, you know, we want to see 6'2". No, it's not a deal breaker for sure. Okay. However, with Yurchich, it, it's becoming more and more clear to me that he wants a passer and not yes. a runner. And, yep. and the, I mean, of course, they had Bo pretty much already, or they had Bo already committed, of course, before Yurchich got here. And then what's what's who's the one recruit that you're just really one after drew Aller. Yep. He was of course six, five and you know, yeah. Can, can drew run for sure. Uh, but he's not, you know, that's not his first thing. You know, he, he's definitely more of a passer uh, than anything else. Now, Marcus Stokes doesn't quite fit that category. He's six. I haven't six, one and a half right now. Um, you know, he, he should be able to get to at least six, two, I would think in the next year or two. Uh, but if you look at JJ Cole, JJ Cole's freaking six, six, you know, he's a giant dude. Yeah. yeah. He's six, six. So to me, I mean, your teacher, I think is definitely looking for size and guys who are going to sit back there. And I don't, I, I don't want to say a pocket passer because that's not really how that it doesn't works exist anymore. anymore. But yep. No, but definitely somebody who, you know, is going to hold out in that pocket as long as possible to get get the ball off before uh, taking off. I mean, I talked about Jaden Rashada previously about how, you know, I think Penn State cooled on him. Well, a big, I think a big reason for that is he's one of those guys that wants to run, you know, sooner than he should. Yeah. And, and just from everything I've gathered, Penn State's trying to get away from that. They want guys uh, who are always going to stay back there, take the hit if they have to, but but throw that ball. Yeah, and I and I think that that for the most part that's been pretty consistent because I asked the same thing of um oh jeez we're having a great day with Fair names fun. today uh Penn State offensive coordinator Four. 2016 uh, Big Ten championship game went on to be Don, Mississippi Don. State Joe Moorhead Moorhead thank you Joe, Joe Moorhead. Moorhead Joe I asked Joe Moorhead about that uh you know. What is your preference as far as, you know, the quarterback and what they're able to do? And he said, you cannot play the position if you can't be a passer first. So the way it's worked out, I think, has been a little bit different over time. But I think there's always been that North Star of like, we don't want a guy that is just a runner, even though sometimes they do recruit those guys. They try to get those guys to then be passers because I think Will Levis is a perfect example of guy Mm -hmm. that didn't quite fit that because he was a bit of a scrambler, was a bit of a runner, and ended up transferring because his skill set, I don't know if it was, they didn't view him the way that Kentucky did, and Kentucky does not have, they have no qualms about what you do in the pocket. Yeah. Hey, he did well at Kentucky last year, man. Yes, um, I was yes, happy he did. For Will, so. Um, but yeah, that's all I got today, T-Frank. I don't know what else you got. You got anything else to, to talk about here? I got the outro music. I got you. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that'll do it today for the BWI Daily Edition. Rounding out the week with Ryan Snyder coming up next week. Some great stuff. Stay tuned. We might have some exclusive interviews here on the BWI Daily Edition. Still working through those. Never want to promise anything until you get the bird in the hand. But we'll be back next week with some great stuff either way. I'm your host, Thomas Frank Carr. We'll talk to you then.